Well, I went to a very small school, the first and second, third and fourth, fifth and sixth, and seventh and eighth. Those two grades are always together all the way up. So I went to a very small school, about 25 in both grades simultaneously. So I had the same teacher for two years. One year I learned, the next year I taught. So I came from a very small school, high school, about uh, 85 people in my high school. Played six-man football. But the key, uh, and that's in my particular um, education, was were the teachers. Because the teachers were one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, there were small classes, and they made sure every student participated. I mean, sooner or later, you were going to be the president, the secretary. You were going to be on the basketball, baseball, football. You were on every team. So I think the size of the school doesn't make that much difference. What makes a difference is the interest of the student and the help of the teachers to sort of forge the ideas that students might have and might want to explore. That really has an impact on how far you can go with your education. Well, I had inspiring teachers and inspiring parents. My parents uh, always believed in me, always had confidence in me, always encouraged me, no matter how badly I failed, that I could do it. Now, they never told me what I should study. That was my decision. But my parents were uh, very, very encouraging, forthright, and education was the way to the future for preparing me to be an active member of society and participate and contribute eventually. So my parents from the beginning, education, education, and more education, and do what the teacher says. And if you don't, there might be consequences. <laughs> Did they go to college? Were they related? Did anyone yes. careers to science? Uh, no, my dad's an educator. He was superintendent of schools, master's degree in history and math, and my mom was a full-time homemaker. I enjoyed school. It was, and that had a lot to do with the, with the attitude of the teachers toward the students. In a small school, it's, it's more like a family than, than we think of large public schools now. So, sure, I enjoyed school. It was always fun, always an adventure encouraging uh, students, encouraging faculty, and that always had a big impact. And yes, I was always interested in science from, from the beginning. I thought at first I would be an engineer, but then I discovered I liked preferred animals and uh, health, and so I started gravitating toward animal health and human health. No, you don't, you don't have to be brilliant and an absolute intellect. Now, you do have to be dedicated. You have to be committed. You must study and prepare because one year builds on the next and builds on the next all the way through your education. So there has to be a commitment there. But um, people of average intelligence, and I, I consider myself in that category, by simply preparing, working hard with uh, good teachers to guide me, uh, I was able to make a very productive career. Tenth grade in high school. I uh, decided then that I wanted to go in animal health and become a veterinarian. At that time, I didn't know I wanted to be a scientist. I thought I wanted to practice veterinary medicine, which I did for a while. So I had a uh, fantastic 4-H um, club leader, a county agent, who was extremely encouraging and uh, helped me a great deal to formulate the idea that, sure, I could go to Texas A&M. Sure, I could pass. Sure, I could be a veterinarian. There's nothing to keep me back. Only my attitude or my lack of commitment. We always had dogs and cats. I had horses, cattle, and sheep. So I had uh, lots of animals all the way through high school. I, I showed sheep, exhibited sheep uh, across the whole United States. Well, um, my background is in, I'm a veterinarian, so that means I could practice. I'm qualified to practice veterinary medicine in the state. But what I do is research on diseases of animal. Pathology means uh, the study of the process of disease. How does a, the disease develop? Now, the reason we study that is so we can interrupt the disease and, and uh, improve the health of the animals and avoid disease and so we would have healthier animals and safer food. So that process has always intrigued me to this day. I'm still just as intrigued as I was when I first found it. I have graduate students in my laboratory. I have taught uh, veterinary students and graduate students and I still teach graduate students today. I have a lot of international experience. I've worked all over South America, every country. I lived there for five years. I worked in South Africa, East Africa. I lived in Germany. I lived in Canada. I've lived out of the country seven years. 
I speak two languages, Spanish and English, and, and that's because of the outreach. My own laboratory now, I have six graduate students, and they're from four different countries. And so uh, we have a lot of international outreach. Well, I'm a fly fisherman. So every time I have an opportunity, I go fly fishing. I tie my own flies, and uh, every time I go any place close to a trout stream, I always have my rod and everything prepared so I can fish an hour or 30 minutes or two days, whatever is available. We so can go out and block everything else out. Everything, everything ceases to, uh, no more thinking or planning, just go and enjoy the environment for a few hours. I think uh, the future is going to be so bright and so many opportunities. The students who are prepared, the students who really commit themselves and study, and the teachers who encourage those students will make the future. They'll actually create the future. It's brighter and brighter all the time. I see merging of medicine and veterinary medicine and dentistry into a one medicine concept so that we'll all work as a team. Heretofore, we've done a lot of other different things, but now this is going to come into focus. Health and working in the area of health, there will always be a demand there. And it's an intriguing area to work in, the biological systems. There's no end to discovery.